All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. Welcome to episode 212 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. I'm your host, Julian Gill, and we've got the man, Andy Moyen, back on the FAQ podcast to talk about, well, you know, last week's episode was facking off at sea. Today it's going to be facking off in Miami. We're going to talk about the gathering, with Mr. Vinnie Vincent, uh, and the bar crawl, and um, <laughs> all the things that Andy was a part of. So consider this a part two of the Kiss Cruise 8 recap by the Kiss FAQ. Also make sure you check out the latest episode of Three Sides with Tommy Summers, who recounts his first uh, Kiss Cruise had some great stuff on that episode and uh you know podcast rock city of course has done their recap of the event as well so check out all our brother and sister podcasts andy good to see you you sound like shit we've been speaking uh just before we've started recording i know i sound like shit um is the the cruise crud as it's well known but it's good to see you alive you, you've had a tough week haven't you yeah, I'm uh, I'm alive. I'm finally up. It's been uh, you know over a week. <clears throat> I still have the cough as my voice is still carries, but it's even kind of raspier. <laughs> you know what? We get good value for the Kiss Cruise money. It's the gift that keeps on giving, disease and all, after the fact. But it was great to see you. It was great to see Kim. And you know, I, I do want to straight off the bat congratulate you and Joe on pulling off the gathering in Miami. That's primarily what we're going to be talking about. But you know, I bow down. To you two getting Mr. Vinnie Vincent to Miami <laughs> and through two days of signings in Miami and then on to stage with Four by Fate, you know, in Miami. And we're going to go through each parts of those to hear the good, the bad, the ugly, and the challenges from your perspective. But from my perspective as a customer, as someone who bought a ticket to meet Vinny, I am very, very happy with the end result. I got my item signed. He did a Vinny did a wonderful job signing those. I got a fantastic photograph with Vinny. It may not be the the original Ankh Warrior makeup, but you really can't tell. But the photograph is ten times better than the one I had from Atlanta, which was all kind of mishewed, terrible quality crap. Um, so I am very happy with that. And Vinny again signed. Two of my items. He didn't sign a poster, but uh, I guess we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, so from your perspective, just a, a quick yes, no answer. Was the gathering a success for you as someone who has suffered for month after month in the planning of it? When you take a deep breath now, um, or was it, uh, from your perspective, ultimately, was it a success? Um, in ways, yes. Other ways, no. Um it is um uh, how do we how do we start this how do you want to start this do you want to start from the vinny side or the actual party side that's how the, we got to separate the separate it well let's let's start at the beginning really with it's going to be vinny showing up to sign and meet the fans for photos on the first day you know uh, let's start with that from your perspective was that a success uh, you know what? In the long run, yes, it was. I think everybody, from what I saw, I mean, I was running around, my head cut off like a chicken cut off, but I was trying to make everybody happy. Um, we were trying to get the line, line straight and explaining to people what was happening and how things were going to work, uh, how to go in, have your photo taken first, go out the door, and then we re reline people up, and then they would do the, the, the signatures. Uh, I thought the photos went absolutely tremendous. I... I can't say enough for Bobby Jamiska. Bobby, you are awesome. Point blank. It, it, Bobby's pictures are off the hook. And if you haven't, in all the pictures after you, it's up on the website at www.thekisscruisepreparty.com, and they're up there. And she took candid ones. She took, I mean, unbelievable. So the photos are just off the hook. So, uh, yeah, and, 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 and here's a satisfied customer here, like I just said, you know, at the beginning, that I was thrilled to replace that picture from Atlanta with the one that Bobby took, which is absolutely fantastic. So, good job. Yeah, more than good job. Off the hook. Everybody praised Bobby. Everybody said out a shout out to Bobby Jamiska because she cranked it, man. It was awesome. Um, now, to tell you the truth, 
I don't want to lie. I hate lying. I don't like to lie to people. I don't like to mislead people. Um, there were some issues with the signings, okay? Is that uh, in the beginning, all right, wait a minute. I want to show everybody. This is a contract. So we're not, I want to make this clear. This is a signed contract between me, Joe, and Mr. Vincent. So that we did really have a contract with Vinny. It wasn't like, I'm going to do this, I will do this, I won't do this, I'll just show up, yada, yada. So there is a signed contract. Actually, there's two of them, one for Tuesday and one for Monday, because originally we were only going to do Tuesday. But then Vinny wanted to do Monday because he was supposed to be down in Florida, which not many people know that uh, he was supposed to be in Florida at Spook Empire where Peter was, but he had a problem with, I guess, something happened with him with the promoter down there, and they didn't want him back. So... Uh, we can get into that if we really want to get into that or we don't have to either way. Anyways, um, Joe and I originally said that when you got your package, you were going to get, you could get two pre-signed items. And the why is I'm mentioning that? Because somebody else has mentioned this on a different podcast. So I'm going to get this. I want everybody to, to straight. I'm going to give everybody the full straight, no lies. When we originally said you, were, you could get two stuff signed, your own stuff. So if you bought like a Lick It Up album and a Vinny Vincent agent, you could have it signed. We also said that you were going to get a pre-signed poster. It was a special poster that says, I was there. And then things look awesome. I don't have one exactly on me, but they really look, I, I do, but I, I don't want to go jump and get it. But uh, Ju Julie, <laughs> oh, here it is. Kim, Kim just handed me over, over it. Yeah. So, so. Vinny agreed. Vinny agreed to pre-sign these posters. So basically, you would have a third thing signed. So I'm putting a big smile on my face because I have to. Because basically, Vinny, it wasn't really, it's not technically in this contract, the original contract. But we had emails, so emails are contracts after you put your John Hancock on them. Vinny agreed to sign all the posters pre-signed posters for the tickets that we sold. Well, Mr. Vincent decided to change his mind up and down like a coin on us. You flip the coin today, you flip it tomorrow. Every day we'd wake up, what's going to happen next? Yes, he is going to sign him. No, he's not going to sign him. Yes, he is going to sign him. No, he's not going to sign him. Yes, he is going to sign him. Now think about this. This is what Joe and I went through for like seven or eight months with him. So it drove us absolutely having, having a nuts. contract did not uh, necessarily smooth everything over and keep him uh, nailed down to, you know, uh, what was expected of him and what his deliverables were. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Um, the contract basically, when it first gets started, um, Joe had reached out to some people to try to get in touch with Vinny and he couldn't he wasn't having success. And I had told Joe, I said, Joe, I know who to contact, the right person to contact, because now he has taken over Vinny from Derek. And that was Randy. <laughs> he kind of stole him or something. I don't know whatever the deal was. So anyways, I contacted Randy. We had a meeting. We had a conference call somewhere around early March, I think. Yeah. Late February. Early, yeah. Late February. And uh, so we set up the conference call. We had a conference call. Explained to Randy what we liked Vinny to do come down, sign autographs. We weren't even talking makeup. We were just like, just to get him down here. And uh, and I was at work. I said I had to go. So Joe and uh, Randy kept talking. Uh, I think about two or three days later, uh, Joe calls me up. He goes, hey, Andy, man, check this out. I said, what? Uh, Vin Vinny's in. I said, cool. And I said, that's awesome, man. This is, this is kind of interesting to be kind of cool. Um, Next thing you know, Vinny turns around and says, well, yeah, Joe turns around and says, hey, guess what? I said, what? Vinny wants to play. And I said, what? What do you mean he wants to play? Vinny would like to play a couple songs. I says, oh, my God, you got to be kidding me. And Joe goes, what's the matter in here? I go, he hasn't played electric in front of a crowd over in 20-something in, in years that we know of. So I said, this is going to be even more off the hook and crazy. But then Joe turns around and goes, well, guess what, Andy? Check this out. I go, what? Vinny wants to wear makeup. I literally fell out of my chair. And I'm like, what? He wants to wear the arc. You heard me, people, the arc. And I'm like, no way. 
this is this is insane. This can't be happening. I, I I'm in a dream world. So of course the nutty us fans, um, the nutty fans go, oh my god, oh my god, where can I sign on the dotted line? How fast can I sign my name on the dotted line with this? And Joe and I were so excited to make this all happen. So as months go on, we have a nice long contract for only Tuesday. Well, as I said, Vinny was supposed to do something down in Florida, in Orlando. Something didn't work out, I guess. I don't know what ended up happening. So he couldn't do it. But at the meantime, he wanted to do Monday because he was going to be down in Orlando. So he says, hey, can, can you guys do more tickets for Monday? We said, okay. I gave in. I didn't really want to do Monday, but I gave in because I know it's tiring. And it's, people have to understand, it's our vacation, too. It's, this isn't my job. You know, it turns into a job, but it's not my job. It's our vacation, too. So it's another, you know, I got, I got you know, my future wife. I got my mother with me. You know, Joe's got Patrice with them. They want to be on vacation. Here we are going, oh, my God, now we're, like, putting more work on us. And not only that, at the same time, we're doing the gathering, which is basically the party part at the same time. So we're, like, the massive amount of indication of stuff that we took on was insane. Insane. So as we're going along with all this stuff, in the contract, Vinny says, well, I'm going to wear the ankh, but we, we had to hide it. We couldn't technically say that he was going to wear makeup because there was some kind of thing about this, you know, could be a cyst and deceased letter because I'm proving it right now, and I know it's been on another broadcast or another podcast. Vinny owns the ankh makeup, people. He owns it. Gene and Paul, a kiss company, whatever, let it go about six or eight months ago. Vinny scooped it up. Vinny owns the ARC. He does. Because when we signed all these things, lovely things, I wasn't going to do this without a lawyer. No way. Because we know his reputation in the past has been kind of, you know, kind of sketchy. So I got a lawyer. We got a lawyer. Well, a lawyer checked into it. Vinny owns the ARC. But we couldn't say nothing. We couldn't tell anybody. It was going to be a, like a huge surprise for everybody. Basically, he was going to debut the ARC for us at at the meet greets. Basically, on that Monday, when he walked out of the car and stuff, and he showed up, he was going to be in face paint. People were going to go, holy shit, you know? But as time goes on, as you saw, months and months, all of a sudden, uh, there was this thing. All of a sudden, he says, well, I'm not going to wear makeup. And we were like, well, you got a contract. You, you said you were going to wear it. You got to wear it. And he wanted more money to wear it. So we're like, we're going to give him the money. So he's supposed to wear it. So then all of a sudden, he was going to do a video for us with, with makeup on, kind of hide his face like he did in, in the land and all that whole thing kind of thing. And like, But it, it was only going to be done on that weekend. We were only going to be able to release it at like 6 o'clock on that Sunday. It was going to be like a huge surprise for everybody. Well, it comes out, he wasn't going to wear it. Gene and Paul go to, I mean, sorry, Gene and Ace, you know, they're in Australia. People ask Gene, oh, what about this Vinny Vincent's kiss, isn't that? Well, from what I understand, Vinny got nervous. Because you can own something, which I'm finding out. This is all new to me, too, because I don't do this stuff for a living. Just because you own something doesn't mean you need money to back it up. Yeah, You yeah. may own it, but you need you need a cash flow. You know, I can. You can turn around and say, "Hey, Andy, man, you, you know, I own this. You can't. You can't start. You, you send a letter to me. I'll have to start no matter what. And then, but then I'm going to have to go to court, right? I'm going to have to give money to to defend myself for some of my own. So I think Vinny got so nervous and didn't want to go to court and mess and do all this stuff. I think he just. So, well, no. And then Joe and I tried to make an addendment with the guy. He didn't want to even do an addendment. We wanted to actually get him out of the wearing makeup. So the next thing you know, we, everybody started talking. Uh, I says, well, and I came up with these kind of crazy ideas. I started throwing these to the lawyer to throw it to Vinny. I go, what, what, instead of, okay, you know, if, you don't, if you're afraid of wearing the ark, it's okay. So how about if you take the circle in the ark and mush it all out and then make it all gold? Kind of change it up a little bit. And that's where the cross thing came into thing. So we knew about the cross. You know, the cross wasn't a surprise to Joe and I. And that's, you know, Vinny started making sketches about, hey, I'll do this and do a cross. Sent over and said, hey, he's going to try this cross out. We said, okay. But then we were kind of like, well, will people like it? 
we, we were kind of like, we didn't know. We didn't know people were going to go, that's kind of cool because it kind of looks like Yonk, but it doesn't, yeah, but you, it does. You, you know, to, to be perfectly honest, I mean, you really can't tell that it's not the Ankh uh, unless, you know, you look up close because with his, the way his hair goes and with it, how it always goes, you know, it ultimately doesn't matter. I mean, I can understand Vinny being very cautious when it comes to Kiss's lawyers and rightfully being very frightened of Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley because, you know what, he has been on the losing end of legal battles with Gene and Paul. And when you piss them off, you know, they've got the lawyers who are just sitting there, you know, waiting to get fed, essentially. So it's not, it's not just about lawyers, it's the money. They have so much money, they could just, you know, you know, they could just drag them on forever, even though you, even though you own this. You know, I own this, but I can't use it because they're just dragging me and dragging me and, and holding me down about. So I understand in, in, in that perspective, his ways about being nervous. So I understand Vinny's point of being nervous. But then, <laughs> but, <laughs> but then Vinny turns around and says, we knew he was going to do Chiller in New Jersey. We knew that he was going to do Friday and Saturday in Chiller. He said that he was not going to do Sunday. Well, all of a sudden, I see Sunday up on there. And I'm like, oh, my God, Joe, look. And I show, show pictures. Sunday, there is no way that he was going to make Chilla from Sunday from New Jersey down to Florida because he doesn't fly. So people had to drive him. He goes, he has drivers. He doesn't fly. I don't know why he doesn't fly. That's a different story. I don't know if he can't fly or he's afraid of flying or something in his personal back life. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't really care. Yeah, I don't really matter. care. Not, neither here nor there for us. Yeah, but, but he wanted to do Chilla. So we said Friday and Saturday, dude, all good. Sunday, don't do. You're going to kill us. You can't be late on Monday because we got this. This is called a contract. This is when you say you're going to be there. This is saying what you're going to do. So I'm like, hey, and he's driving us nuts. And he wouldn't cancel. And we're like freaking out because we're like, he's not going to get here on time. Or he's going to get here. He's going to be so tired that he's never going to get up out of the bed. You know, we, we were really nervous. And I'm not going to lie, Joe and I even fought at times. Sometimes Joe and I wouldn't even talk for each other for weeks at times. There were a couple times in the eight or nine months, Joe didn't even, I didn't even talk. We literally did things on our own. We, we literally did not talk to each other. It took a week or two sometimes to break the ice between the two of us. We got so much stuff on our plate. And he, Vinny was driving us nuts one way or the other. And we were fighting against each other about it. I wouldn't sleep for weeks at times. I'm a late sleeper. It was bugging the crap out of me. We have people who bought tickets. We we're so nervous. We didn't know what was going to happen. I mean, it was really kind of, we were like this. We were on edge all the time. Every day we get up, what text, what email, what's going to happen now? We were scared shitless. I'm telling you people, I will not lie. I was scared shitless. I was. I was so nervous, and so wasn't Joe. We were very, very nervous about all this going down. Even though we had this, it doesn't matter. These aren't worth nothing, people. People said the word of mouth, you know, talk. See, these are contracts. Unless you got money like this to back them up, to force people to do things to a certain point, they don't have to do them, you know? It doesn't matter. You, you lead the horse to water, but you can't force them to drink, right? You know, it's like the posters. You can't force him to sign the posters, even though he said he would, and it's under contract. If he doesn't do it, he doesn't do it. What are you supposed to do? There's nothing you can do. No, it, all, all, all that you can do is the very best that you can do. So let's get to the, let's get to the Monday. He he'd done the chiller appearances, and right off the bat, um, as you know, he he shows up in makeup uh, for those we, appearances. We, well, well, he he was the big thing. Uh, and chiller. When he did Chilla, we we had a suspicion that he might put on that cross, the cross, or whatever you want to call it, the cross thing. We had a suspicion. All of a sudden, we were waiting for the first photo to come out. The first photo come out, and bang, 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 bang. The text started coming through, the PMs. Oh, my God, Andy, Joe, look at this, look at this. He's wearing this. It looks like the egg, but it's a cross. What's up? And they were asking us, what's the deal already? We kind of knew that he might try it, but we were, like, afraid at the same time because, the, you know, like you said, it, it kind of covers it up, 
But we don't know if Gina or the Dukis lawyers would send him a cyst and deceased list a letter while he was in Jersey. So by the time he got to Florida, it could have hit Florida, maybe. I don't know. And it, we would have never had any makeup. But at that point, we didn't care. We didn't care if he was in makeup or not. We just wanted him there. We just wanted him there to make a lot of people happy. So all of a sudden, we got the word. He was on the road. He didn't do chiller on Sunday. He canceled it. We finally saw it like three days before. We posted it to the lawyer, posted it to Joe. We go, look, man, he canceled. Thank God. Thank somebody. He canceled. Good. It's a good start. Uh, next, you know, we heard he was on the road. Okay, so that, that was going to be a question. What sort of communication do you get? Obviously, it's still a very, still a very tight timeline, even though he didn't do the Sunday in uh, in New Jersey. He's got to get from New Jersey to Miami, and that's a fair amount of dis- – I mean, it, it's over 20 hours of driving just yeah, straight. Yeah, 15, over 1,500 breaks. miles. Yeah, that's brutal. Yeah. yeah, it's brutal. And he was supposed to have two people driving him, and ended up coming down to one, one person that drove him. Go figure. I don't know what that was. Real good sense what that was. So anyways, uh, we had contact with a lawyer. So we knew. He was on his way down as that. Uh, he ended up showing up about, I think it was about 1 o'clock on Monday afternoon. He was at the hotel. Uh, we knew he was there. Um, uh, he got some rest. And then, of course, he was putting on a face paint. Uh, he was what? Uh, I think he, he was about an hour and a half late on Monday, I think. I can't remember because my head was like, by then it was all over the place. Um, he showed up. He got out of the car. He looked at Joe and says, hey, how was everything going? You guys all right? And Joe says, okay. <laughs> and I basically looked at I looked at him and said, uh, let's go. We're running late. Let's, let's get this on. Let's go, you know. So we walked around the corner. Here he goes. Open the doors. We pushed everybody back just to, you know, because we want to, you know, make sure we had the security guys there. Open the door. Here you go, people. Here's the first pictures or videos saying, here he is. You want him? We delivered. Here he is. Bingo. So we went inside. Uh, we went inside the room. Uh, we explained to Vinny how things were going to go. You know, the photo. People come, you know, because you saw it. Come in the door. They go around the, uh, the photo thing. Take your photo. Go out the other door. They, people go hang out in the hallway because we had Andy DJ Noise playing, you know, Vinny Vincent tunes. Any tune that he was playing on, written on, which is cool. Uh, we had a uh, the the uh, the hotel had a special cup. Uh, Joe and I designed the cup. The bar, you know, the Holiday Inn bought the cup. They were selling mojitos out of the cups. They had a special, say, Vinny Vincent menu of food and drinks that were there around. So everybody was Monday man was having a blast, even though that he was late. Um, People came up to register. They got their bags of goodies. Monday, it was, uh, 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 let me again just interrupt you as a customer. Monday was fucking awesome. You know, <laughs> um, I'm so glad I flew in a day early to be there on Monday because, you know, just the atmosphere and the vibe, it was hella crazy. The amount of people who were there Monday compared with Tuesday. And I know that a few of us jumped from Tuesday to Monday and you were very kind to accommodate, you know, our, our demands just, just to try and get it done in case he bailed, uh, you know. It, it, it was just one of those things about the atmosphere in the lobby at the Holiday Inn. The DJ Noise, I said, he hurt my ear. I mean, he the dude who just played loud music and everyone was kind of amped up and having a great time. The alcohol was flowing. The food was flowing. And once we heard that Vinny was here, uh, it, it was just, they did it. It was like, holy shit, Andy and Joe pulled it off. They have done what very few other people have managed to do and gotten Vinny uh, to an expo event successfully. I, I mean, I, I was just totally, you know, I, I was a bit shit-faced by then. But um, I, <laughs> I, I, you probably wanted to get shit-faced the moment you saw him come through the door. But how happy was he with the layout? Because I obviously saw it before, you know, any people had gone in there. I thought it was a great layout. The door, go in, out. You know, it was a great way to cycle people in and get them out quickly, but also get them through. So they did have a moment to be a fly on the wall. Uh, but Vinny didn't have too many people in there. Was he satisfied with all the arrangements that you guys had made? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we explained the video we came in uh, about, you know, we do photos for us that round. They go out and then we go out. But we explained to everybody how everything was going on outside. We tried to keep everybody up to date on everything. Uh, and people, when they registered, we call it registered. You come up, you said your name, we gave you a bag. It was a pink bag and full of goodies. And it was different goodies inside. So people could switch and mix and, you know, trade off if they want to. Uh, we gave them the I was there poster. You know, some people did complain. 
you know, some people did, you know, ah, how come it's not signed? Well, the, the, the thing that we turn around and say, see the guy inside, talk to him. That's all we could say because that's the truth. And, 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 and we just said, if that's one of the two items that you want signed, he will sign it. And, and that's the way we had to present it. There's nothing we could do about it. We wish it could have been different. It is what it is. There's nothing we could do about it. But for the most part, people were very, I, I can't say, you know, I, I can't say enough about the people, man. It was, the people were very uh, gracious. Um, you know, he was a little bit, you know, he was late. But everybody was, like, mellow with it. It wasn't like, oh, my God, what the hell is he? And, you know, yelling and screaming ass. But there were, I mean, uh, you got to give a shout-out to, to Kim, my mother, uh, Kim's friend Rhonda, uh, <laughs> the two Peters, you know, Star Peter and Tom Peters. Man, they went way out of the way. I mean, I knew who they were from the cruise before, but I didn't really know who I was. I got to meet them. I, I mean, I'm telling you, those two, him and his wife were off the hook. They worked so hard. And another shout out too. There's got to be just shout out. I'll tell you this, Jim Madden. Okay, Jim Madden helped us out. But I'll tell you right now, Jim Madden st stepped up and turned around and helped Vinny. And I'm telling you, if it wasn't for Jim Madden, Vinny would probably would have been more lost. I'm telling you, Jim Madden helped Vinny out in so many ways. Even though I was running around, my head cut off trying to keep lines and keep everybody happy and asking questions, you know, because I want to keep everybody up to date. I'm telling you, Jim Madden, man, you definitely helped Vinny out in the two days. And, and a shout-out to all those people. But, you know, I miss some stuff, and I hate I missing that stuff. Seriously, though, people, some people are just nasty. You know, I was in the conference room early on on Monday. Kim come running in crying. And this is within a half hour, 40 minutes of starting. I'm like, what's the matter? Somebody just yelled at me. The poster wasn't signed. They're screaming at me saying we ripped them off, and I just blew. And I'm like, where? Where? I open the door, and I'm looking. You know? Come on, people. These are our vacation. We're doing this to make you people happy. You know, yelling and screaming at uh, the helpers is just ridiculous. We said from the beginning, if somebody had an issue to contact Joe or I personally. Don't go after the workers or helpers. That is just ridiculous, you know? But for the most part, 98% of the people, so awesome. I'm telling you, everybody seemed happy. Um, I have to say, Vinny was sick. I don't know if you knew that, or I don't know how many people knew that. Vinny actually was sick. <laughs> he had to, I don't know if he had the beginning of the flu. But he was sick too. On top of that. Oh wait! And, now, uh, now we know who got everyone sick for on the cruise. Oh, it's that's a, it's hilarious! A, it's a it's a possibility. I mean, he was he was sick too. Um, the photos were great. Vinny seemed very happy. You well, know. Well, let's let's take it back. I mean, registration was a breeze. I mean, when we compare everything to how everything went down in Atlanta, and yes, I don't think there were as many people obviously, uh, as the first time Vinny makes his return. But you guys were really organized. Registration, you get, you went up, you checked in, here's your bag, here's your goodie, here's your laminate, it's got a number on the back, pay attention, someone's going to come out and, t and line you up by numbers. So when your number comes up, make sure you get in line, someone comes out. I think you came out once and bellowed, and then uh, I think it was one of the other guys who, who was coming out, you know, uh, everyone from one to 20 line up and then 20 to 40. I was 40. And, you know, for the photo, it went pretty, it was not smooth. It was kind of staggered. There'd be like little lulls and stuff. So I don't know if Vinny was having more coffee or whether he was just taking micro breaks or as when I got in there, you know, he, I went, he was he, 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 like, um, he, he would actually talk to some people while he was taking the photos. Yeah, uh, that's totally what I was going to say. He did. He saw the line, really, to talk to people. You know, yeah. there, there were people who say, hey, hey, Vinny, thank you for this and that. And then Vinny would turn around and say, hey, thank you. So Vinny started having a conversation with people during the photos. Yeah, that, that was what I thought was awesome because, you know, here's kudos to Vinny as well for being under the weather. Uh, the way I, I knew he was sick because I just know these things. Um <laughs> but, you know, how his interaction with me, again, you know, it's like, what's your name? Julian. Julian what? Gil. 
oh, Julian, I remember the phone, you know, and then, you know, I'm sitting there holding his hand, you know, and say, Vinny, you know, it's really nice to be able to tell you in person what I told you on the phone, you know, and apologize to him for that whole unfortunate thing. Um, but he was so relaxed and, and chill. I mean, he seemed to be really getting, and I'm number 40 in line, and we know that he's had some other people to come out. It's like, he's having conversations with everyone. You know, and, you know I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was awesome. Uh, but but, but you got to look at it this way. He, he was having the photos, but having conversations. <laughs> but he wasn't taking forever, but he wasn't pushing everybody out the door. It wasn't the cattle call, as you see his other things you get the cattle call which which i didn't think people complain nobody it went it went okay i didn't hear anybody say oh my god vinnie talked to me no, during my photo no I'm pissed. no one complained it was just when people came out and were wondering why you know you know some of the people was in line saying this is taking forever they're like well he's talking to people you know yeah. so it, it wasn't a cattle it, you know a kiss photo at a meet and greet is you stand you don't blink they take the picture boom you're gone Vinny was much more he welcomed kind of welcomed people in and i guess it depended on uh you know your personality as well he's like here help me hold the guitar um you know we're, we're gonna hold this together I mean, he was absolutely wonderful on his interaction and it, with and people it, and, and that's another thing i like to get across i don't understand Vinny tortured Jen, Joe and I in, in ways for seven months, eight months. But when it came down to everybody else, when, when, the, when the shit hit the fan, I called it shit hit the fan, you know, taking photos and stuff like that. Ping, the smile went on. Here I am. How you doing? You know what I mean? And, and it worked out. And yeah, yeah, you know, you know, a little tension. You know, there was tension. You know, and there was tension in the room. You know, I mean, what do you expect? You know, this is a lot of work. And, and, you know, we're trying to make everybody else happy. Even if it kills us, we're trying to make everybody else happy. And the consensus say, from my, from my heart, and, and I'm not trying to float our own boat. This is what I want to hear. We want, I want to hear from people while I'm floating around doing this stuff and, and trying to keep lines. And just, I want to hear people's reactions. And everybody coming out of the room with the, with the photos, unbelievable. They couldn't wait to get the photos. They were like, give me photo, give me photo, give me photo. And a Another pro and another shout out to Bobby, because not only did Bobby take the photos, when Vinny was starting to do signatures, she was actually sitting there doing the photos. She was going to, she was fixing the photos, getting them up on the website so people could get them. I mean, those photos were up in hours. Yeah, that, I mean, that's that's the part that totally blew my mind is how quickly you guys got that stuff up i mean come on that's unreal to have processed them that fast and for the quality to have been that good again it's the quality here we are we paid a fair amount of money for a uh, you know a photograph and again it was those photos in atlanta are some of the worst photos i've ever seen taken at an expo event the ones in miami are absolutely fantastic in my opinion and and you know I know some people's photos in Atlanta weren't garbage, but ours ours were that day. They were horrendously lit, not properly done. Uh, so, again, kudos uh, to and your it, team. And that was one of the things that we had learned, or I learned, and that we had researched about photos. That was a big thing for people. It, it wasn't – the signatures are big too, but the photo thing. The photo thing ended up being the biggest, the biggest thing, period. It was all about the photo. I think the photo was the biggest thing out of the whole night. People wanted those photos. So so the photos go by. So again, here we go. People kind of line up. Here we're going to go one through you know, 20 again. And uh, people go in to have their signatures. And, uh, you know, it wasn't rushed. Vinny didn't rush people, you know. And I would, I would, and I would go outside and say, hey, Vinny's taking his time with people. He's taking a few minutes. He's signing them, you know, he's talking to the people and, and it's, you know, you just, it's going to take time. I told everybody it's going to take time because this is, this is how it's going to go. And you know what? As far as I know, nobody complained. Now I'm curious you know? about one thing. Did you know that Vinny was going to be offering extra signatures uh, beforehand or had you kind of expected people just to be going in with their two items? Because that was something that really did seem to slow down that they were, they had, you know, additional items available for purchase in there, including the guitars, um, or if you had additional stuff and wanted to pay your money for additional things to be signed, which I did uh, because I'm a dick. Um, 
No, but I, well, originally I didn't want that to happen. Originally, I wanted you. You had three things: sign poster, pre-sign poster, your two things, and that's it. That was the deal. It was there was no deal about selling extra. And then we kind of said, okay, Vinny, because I said there's some stuff in the background and the back thing that you know up and down. And we finally said, Vinny, sure, you want to sell some stuff on this, you know, extras? It's okay. But then at that point, I told Joe. At one point, I'm like, Joe, this is going to bog down the lines. We know what's going to happen. And you know, it's going to bog down the line because people are going to want to buy stuff. And man, did people buy stuff. Vinny should be tickle pink. I think he must have sold five, six guitars. I'm pretty sure. He, I mean, I think he even sold out of stuff. Or, you know, on the first night, he had sold stuff. So I think they had to go get more photos and stuff done and stuff like that. I, I, so I knew it was going to clog down the lines. But again, it didn't seem to bother people. I seemed to, uh, at one point, uh, I needed a refresher. <laughs> I needed something because I was really stressed. I'm telling you, I might put it, really be, put it in the smiles, but I, we were pretty stressed. Oh no, you you were pretty stressed, and uh, you, we could tell you were hurting cats at one point. I mean, yeah. when you came out bellowing, get it, I mean, your voice was shot as well. So yeah, um, um, it, getting was people, one point trying to that... get people in line was just a you know a challenge. But you know, once we knew why the line was sometimes a little bit slow, and understood, oh, he's selling extra. Then it's like, okay, now we know we're empowered, and uh, we'll just chill out and relax. And then you know, for me, when I found out that oh, it's because he's uh, you know signing some extra stuff, I'm like, oh great, my four photos. I'm going to get the extra one signed and not have him pick which two he wants to sign. I was just like, okay, great. So, you know, it, it, then, you know, it wasn't that slow anyway. So it wasn't yeah. like it was torture. It was a good pace. Not too slow, not too fast. It was a good pace. So then I decided I, I needed something to kind of re-energize myself. So I said, all of a sudden, Vinny says, hey, I want to take a break. I need a few minutes, which was good. It's okay. I think Vinny, and, you know, I hope Vinny sees this. I, I, I really do. I hope somebody passes on. I think he did very well for how sick he really was. And then and, and he took a break. He says, hey, I want to take a break. Can I go in the other room? And I had food, we had food in the other room for him and water, soda, whatever he wanted. We had it all set up in the green room, in the next room. He went in there and took a break. We went in there. I talked to him for a few minutes. How are you doing, Vinny? How are you going? He goes, okay. He goes, man, this is a lot of people. I says, well, I'll wait till tonight. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Tuesday. You know? So anyways... He goes, well, how many people there? I go, there's going to be a lot, you know? So he was, you know, so we talked and he took a break. But one time on Monday, he took a break and I, and I needed something to stretch. So I went and grabbed the pink guitar that he had signed out of the box. And I walked out there in the hall, out there in the hall. And I brought out and everybody's eyes lit up like Christmas. And I turned around and I said, anybody want to take a photo? And people are like, the draws drop. And I'm like, here, he take, take it, take a photo. And then Bobby, Bobby followed me and Bobby started taking pictures of people. So I know there's some up on the website too. So next to I'm like here and people are taking photos and I'm watching these people and they're happy. And I'm like, look at their faces. And I'm like, okay, I get it. I'm back to like, a, a weight got lifted off my shoulder. I'm in, I'm back in the game. I got re-energized. I love this. People are happy. I mean, he took a break. People are not screaming at us. You know, I mean, it, it just seemed to all work. And Monday, like you said, Monday was crazy. And there was actually less people on Monday than Tuesday. There were more people that saw Vinny on Tuesday than Monday. But Monday was more nuts. Not because it was just the first time. You just seen that whole atmosphere on Monday night. People were just, just got in and they're like, party, party, party. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy, but it was fun, you know? So, um, so on Monday, when everybody got finished, Vinny had to go to rehearsal. So now we're totally exhausted. And Vinny's sick, you know, I'm gonna think, you know, I, I'm sick again. I'm I, I'm giving props to Vinny too. He was very not feeling good. Anyways, we go down the hangar. <clears throat> now, this is the first time I've ever been in the hangar. I we saw pictures of the hangar, but you know, you get that look where you get that picture and it looks bigger than it is, and this or whatever. Okay, 
we stepped into the hangar and I said, oh shit, we're in trouble tomorrow. So we'll get into that a little bit after. So anyways, the guys from Four by Feet were there and uh, they were had uh, and stuff like that. And there were some other people there. Uh, we were able to load in. Uh, the guys were able to load in. All the bands were able to load in on Monday afternoon, which was, that was one thing good with the bar that they opened up to, so everybody could load in. Uh, Four by Fate was there. Uh, Vinny gets up on stage. He's got his guitar, plugs in, but he turns, but he turns towards Rob Officio, like a, you know, the drummer, and he goes like this, and everybody that was there were like that. Did we just hear what we just thought we just heard? It wasn't just like a me. me. He actually went. We just heard it. We just heard him go down. You know, I'm not a guitar expert, but nobody's seen him do anything in public in X amount of years. So now, <laughs> everybody that was in the bar, because we, you know, we were about 10 or 15 people tagging along with us. And uh, we asked people, uh, you know, we really didn't want people to record, take pictures, because we really didn't want to get, you know, on the web, you know, on Facebook or YouTube. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff, for recording, but not posting. So my buddy, uh, good Jeff Hopkins, actually has the first videos of Vinny throughout the whole thing. <laughs> so, I, so I have to get a copy from Jeff, because I was just in awe myself. So anyways, I know I just outed Jeff, but so what, man? I love you, bro. <laughs> so uh, J Jeff Hopkins, my buddy, he actually has the first full-length video of Vinny actually playing guitar. So it was pretty awesome. And the guys are showing them, and they're getting together, and they're practicing. Next you know, they play, look it up. I love it loud. They go through the whole thing. Uh, it lasted about, you know, maybe an hour. And, okay, so uh, let me ask you about one of those songs, because was not All Hell's Breaking Loose supposed to be one of the songs, and what happened to that as far as you're aware? Uh, as far as I'm aware, that we were, we were told uh, that Vinny was going to do All Hell's Breaking Loose. And so we went out to the Facebook world and told everybody, you know, that he was going to do All Hell's Loud and All Hell's Breaking Loose. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe a month month before. And then all of a sudden, we, there was a thing passed along to him. We're not doing All Hell's Breaking Loose. So that's all we know. That's, that's what we got. That was the answer, you know. What are you gonna do? You can't. You can't make somebody force somebody to do something. I, it's so. Hey, I as, think as, as long as he's up there playing, who the hell cares what he's playing? As long as he's playing what he's happy to play, that's the most important thing. That the artist is happy, and four by fate are the sort of people who are gonna play anything anyway. So they can do anything. It's so yeah, talented. And, no, and I give props to those guys because they invited him to play. It wasn't like, hey, I'm Vinny Vincent, I'm gonna come play. No, the guys from Four by Fate invited Vinny to play. I want to make that very clear. It wasn't Vinny dictating. Vinny was invited to play with the guys. And those guys, props to them. Those guys are awesome. Those guys are so friendly, down to earth. And they were just said, okay, fine. It's all good. So I give props to them. So with that. So anyways, rehearsals about an hour or so, give or take. We were deadbeat. Let's go back. We got to get out of here. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so... <clears throat> We went back. People get rest. I don't sleep. Are you kidding me? I try to lay my head down for an hour or two. I couldn't. I got up. I was up at 4 a.m. Go back down to the conference room. I took pictures. Everything that was just still there. Cleaned up. Started sorting bo boxes. The ones that I had to go to the hangar for the next day. And, uh, and, and you know, if you saw them, we had boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff that had to go down the hangar it was insane yeah, there was a ton of shit and it wasn't all my boxes which you know the amount of stuff that there was there it was just absolutely nuts uh and the hangar holy shit yeah that was my first impression too oh my god yeah. this is small yeah well now we're, i'm gonna explain about the hangar now well, I, see, this is why i want to get some stuff straightened out too there, there was um, we 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 knew the guests were going to be on the sides because we had saw the pictures, you know, from early on. And those benches, if people saw them, they had like couch benches. Is that what they call them? Yeah, I don't know what they call them, but there were couch benches, basically, believe it or not, on the floor, on the sides, on the floor. There was things in the middle of the floor. <laughs> there was stuff in the back. But when we got there Monday, we we're like, this shit can't be here. You guys have to take all this apart by tomorrow night. 
So basically, the bar had to rent a U-Haul, and those guys had to be the next month on Tuesday started taking everything apart because uh, I'm just going to come out and say it. The hangar lied to us. They told us that that place could hold 1,400 people. No fucking oh, way. And we believed it. So we said, okay, but people are like, you said it yourself. There's no way. There's no, we knew it. We, we walked in there on that Monday. We like, oh my God. But when you look up online, if you look on the census or whatever you can look on the official thing, it actually says that bar can hold 1,100 people. Yeah, with a lot of Vaseline. I, I, you know, so we didn't intend to have it this, that packed. I mean, we wanted it packed, but we didn't want it to be so, like, sardines. <coughs> and, it, <coughs> and it ended up being like sardines. And we're sorry. There's nothing we could do about it. We can't cancel. There was no way we could find a different place. It was too late. We don't live in Florida. <laughs> we, we, you know, by the time it was too late, you know, we had, you know, signed contracts with the bar and stuff. We could, should, couldn't bail out, you know, so we couldn't do anything about it. It is what it is. Now, on the other hand, the stuff that we had heard, and I'm sorry, it was packed like sardines. We were still running around with our heads cut off in that place, trying to do stuff. It was very dark. We could barely see. And I know the special guest, like yourself, and some of the other special guests were telling me when I got out, when I was able to get over to say to the sides to say hello, how are you, how thing? Andy, it's so dark in here, and I'm like, yeah, there's nothing I could do. Yeah, you, you know, know, you know what? Well, we worked through it. Uh, you know, I was holding a, you know, the iPhone has a flashlight. I was holding it over Bob at one point while he was signing. Then over Ken, we, you know, we dropped stuff on the floor that all the iPhones had come out. But you know what? Uh, first of all, I want to thank you and Joe for accommodating me at a very late stage. You know, I asked, hey, can I do a book launch as part of the gathering? And you guys are really accommodating and helped me out. So I do want to thank you, you know, and, and Joe for, you know, accommodating me and allowing me to be part of, you know, we we we, the, we the wanted to accommodate everybody, and that's that. That was part of our that was part of our problem. <laughs> we we wanted to help everybody <laughs> to the max. There were people still peeing on us the day of the show. Like you know, they, we had uh, you know, like the dead daisies were there. You know, some of the other supporting aspects. Lucifer contacted me. Uh, Beth Slade ended up sending me a message late, which I never saw. I mean, there, all the other bands started wanting to show up. Everybody wanted to be there. And at some point, we just, I'm like, holy shit. How do you, and, and for the people who started sending me PMs and stuff, I didn't turn on my phone. Once I hit the holiday in, my, my focus was right here, right now, doing Vinny stuff and then doing the party. So I didn't turn on Wi Fi. But before we kind of talk about the hangar event, let's wrap up on Vinny quickly. Tuesday, yeah. you know, there are less people to go. Uh, how is he doing in terms of, you know, obviously he's still sick. Was he sicker? And how was his mood? And how did just, you know, that second day of signatures and photos go uh, in comparison with the first? The same, better, smoother, or, you know, just uh, whatever? It, it was kind of, kind of like the same pace. Oh, actually, it was less because it was, actually it's weird. We actually had more people on Tuesday than Monday, but Tuesday kind of like, like it went slower because it was like a bunch of people and then it slowed down and then a bunch of people and then it slowed down because people were coming in off their flights and this and that. Yeah, because it was weird because I, I didn't hang around there all day. I came down to set up the elder backdrop and then kind of went out. I hung around a little bit and chatted with friends and, you know, met people as they were coming in and whatnot. But there were less people congregating in, you know, the lobby uh, compared with Monday, which is why I was under the impression there were fewer people, uh, you know, going through. So it was like there were less people hanging around and maybe just coming, getting their stuff done and going. Yeah, I, I think it was more of they getting their stuff done and going. Uh, Andy didn't play on Tuesday because Andy had to be down at the hangar, say at like two thirty, or he had to work and then he or something like that, and then he had to be at the hangar for like two or two thirty. So Andy wasn't here playing music, so we didn't really have that music vibe going. So that was probably one thing. And I think when people came in, they did their stuff and they left because we actually asked people, when you're done, if there's nothing really, you know, whatever. Go do something. You know, you're not going to see Vinny anyways. You're not going to, he, you know, it's not like 
why crowd around because you're not going to hang out because you're not going to see him. You know, when he does come out, it's going to be like one or two seconds gone. You know, bathrooms there, gone. The, the, the green room, gone. I mean, literally, there was such a tight space where we could move him so fast, so quick, and it wasn't that long. So, you know, there was no sense of people hanging around and to try to sneak extra photos or extra this and that. And it, and it worked out great. I, I mean, I can't say enough about the people. People were just so awesome. I mean, they really, like, really, really good. And I loved it, you know. So on that part, and still, Vinny was sick. Yes, Vinny was still sick on Tuesday. Um, but still, he was in a good, he ended up working really good. He ended up taking his time with the photos again. He ended up taking his time with the signatures again. So I think in the long run, you know, I, I think Vinny should have been happy. I hope he was happy because I think it really worked out for him in the long run. You know, he sold a lot of stuff, you know, and, and he, he did smile for everybody again in the photos and everything else. So I think everything went by. And I didn't hear any complaints coming out saying, man, was he mean to me, you know, or oh, geez, this and that. I didn't hear anything. No. Nope. And I'm, like I said, I'm not floating my own boat. I've been off the ship now, what, over a week? I, I see stuff online, but I, you know, I don't see anything. But I've never, never, I haven't seen anything about Vinny B. Oh, man, he was a jerk to me. I you was, know? I, again, and I, just talking about my own perspective, is I am thrilled with the four autographs that Vinny did for me. And he didn't like one of my photos, and he kind of gird at it. I'm not just like scribble over it. It's Mark Slaughter. Mark's not going to care, you know. But he did, he did beautiful autographs. Um, he took his time. He, uh, you know, I, I've already said how nice he was during the photograph, but during the signing, I just squatted down at the table, and, and it, it, it was not an impersonal, here, give me your shit, sign it, get out. It was, you know, he engaged me, um, and I assume it was probably quite similar for most people, that it, it wasn't the assembly line, and that's what I liked as, as much. So day two is done. You guys wrap up, and you've got to get down to the hangar again. I mean, you must start feeling like a yo-yo at this point. Yeah, um, uh, you know, Joe was already down at the hangar, <laughs> sorry, <clears throat> Joe was already down at the hangar, and I was still running around, my head, head cut off, uh, still up at the Holiday Inn, and then I said, and then I had to go, because we had four by feet, the meet and greet was four by feet, and uh, when I got down there, there were people already kind of like lingering around the door. And they're asking me, hey, Andy, what's going on? And I'm like, I just got here. Give me two minutes. Let me open it. Go in the door. Let me find out what's going on. I go in the door. Look around. See Joe. Hey, Joe, what's going on? He goes, well, they're running about 15 minutes late. They're making sure they're getting the sounds right. Everybody's okay. All right, okay. So I went back outside. I had a box of still stuff that people didn't pick up yet for oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you trying to hand out the four by fate bags for everyone. You're like shouting out names. And like, no, uh, I think only one person responded. It was like hilarious. You, you're just sitting there <laughs> going, where the fuck is everyone? Don't you want your stuff? And I'm like, Hey Andy, can I go in? You know? And, and you're just like, ah, <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing. You, 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 I don't understand. You pay for a bag of goodies. You know, there's a, I mean, there's nice stuff in there, you know, and there's a signed CD, a four by eight CD. And there are like six or seven people that haven't got them. I'm like, haven't you got anybody? And you know, of course, you know, my voice is already shot and I'm trying to scream it. And, and the rest of you guys are all looking at me like, we already have our bag. We just want in. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't let you in yet. So just give me, you know. So anyways, uh, when you guys all came in, you guys got the first glimpse of the hangar. <laughs> Yeah, and then, that, uh, that, that was that was a moment of you know I I got in earlier because you know I oh, yeah, set yeah, up yeah. my table you know and again thanks for bringing all my books down and stuff they were out of boxes they were on the table Bob was sitting there just you know on his phone ready to go I'm like hey Bob uh, you know so I get set up I come in I'm just like holy shit this place is small there's no way that this is the capacity and then I see the railings and we're up on the sides with our table I'm like okay no I I, I can work with the space. But I'm like, uh, uh, I'm going to get back behind there, and I'm not getting out. So I'm like, uh, how are we going to pee? You know, how are we going to have a drink? And, you know, then Ken shows up, and he's like, wow. Uh, you, you know, it, it was like, 
we, we could tell it was going to get challenging once anyone came in. And it seemed that only five minutes after we got in, the doors opened because people were in. And after that, it was just nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. Um, so this is my, me as a perspective from a vendor, and I've not really talked about it. It was insane. And thank you so much to everyone who came and visited, whether it was to say hi, to shake a hand, to purchase a book, or a Ken's CD, or Bob was busy the whole time. It was nuts on, you know, being next to him was great because he did so much uh, with people coming up to him for his new CD, which he was kind of using as a launch event. Um, we had Matt Vashford, who was just next to us with the the kiss, the other kiss book. So I was busy the whole time, and you know I was like begging, "Hey, twenty bucks, can someone get me a beer?" Um, it, you know, and you know, here's the thing too. I gotta admit, I, I wish I wish I had more time to go over to the guest. I mean, I did get in the microphone at one point and you know say everybody who's there and said, but I have to say, when everybody when, when the first four by three people came in, you know. We, we wanted to do the pictures, and we couldn't get the, the thing up in time. It turned dark. The band wanted to play. We had to get moving. Band played. So then we kind of went reverse. So band played. The acoustic slash electric set. That was great. Which was uh, really good. And from, those guys. You know, I, you know, just hanging out there, listening to those guys, they are so accomplished, but it was such a fun set as well. You know, musically, it was diverse, a little bit of everything, but uh, it, it wasn't short. It was much longer than I expected it to be. So, you know, props to 4 by Fate for a great performance. I wish, oh. you know, I got to find some of the, the footage on uh, YouTube to go back and actually watch it again because I was so busy dealing with books. I mean, I had boxes of books that were pre-bought for people that they were collecting and then other stuff that was being bought. So I missed out on the 4 by Fate stuff. I didn't get my photo with them because I, I couldn't get out. For... on you because all you had to do was tell somebody to come and get me. It, and no, it, said... it was that busy it was that busy that i would have yeah, wanted I mean, to step away because it you know it was you know that's how it goes you know i'm no, doing one thing no, or no, another because, but because, it was it was fun to watch and it was fun to watch them doing their signing with someone sound checking the snare drum i mean that's got to be the one thing that i'm surprised <laughs> they're right in front of the stage they've got their table set up after the photos are completed and they sit down and the line forms up for people to get their stuff signed by four by fate. And then almost to the moment that they're ready to go, bam, snare, bam, snare. Okay, tune your snare. That's good magic. But did it have to happen right then at the moment that people are actually going to be interacting with four by fate? You know, yeah. because you want to tell John Regan and Todd Howarth, Pat and Rob, you know, especially if you have one that you're a favorite from some of the other work that they've done in the industry. Uh, you, you want to have words with them quickly as you cycle through. But bam. And, and, they, and, they, were, and, they, were, and if I even remembered right, they were actually signing extra stuff because it was the deals, the, you know. They, they, they uh, gave, we gave you a, a, a pre-signed poster, which they had signed. Uh, they had pre-signed the CD, Relentless. And they, another bag was a red bag and had goodies in it. And you got a lamb in it. And, you know, I mean, and, they, and it was like you could have one extra thing signed. But those guys, uh, I'm pretty sure they were signing even more. I mean, you can't say, I can't say enough about 4 by Fate. I had been on them uh, since when they had opened up for Ace Freely at Poughkeepsie, New York, like two and a half years ago. I was like, come on, man, I want you guys to play. I want you guys to play. Because I wanted them in New Orleans last, the late year before. But it did, just didn't work out that way. But I'm glad. I got, I, I'm telling you, those if you guys never seen 4 by Fate in all their glory, see them. Because those guys are awesome. Because I think, like you said, they play different kinds. They'll, they'll, they, you know, they played them. That's why I met Rob played on back when he was in, you know, and uh, that Pat, I can never say Pat's last name right. Yes, Barry. Yeah, he's got some serious talent. Yeah. Oh, fuck, he's a monster. You know, they all are. They're all yeah. great players. Todd's a great singer, great guitarist, oh, yeah. great songwriter. You know, John Regan is just a silent bassist he is just, he's yeah. like a john entwistle of that school you don't necessarily know he's there but what he's laying down in the background is professional yes nice, absolutely great, and one of the nice guy. 
one of the nicest people you could ever have. One of my favorite interviews on this show is having John yeah. Regan on there. Very classy. Rob, I don't know as much about, but great, you know, great musician. All of them, yeah. you know, and just watching as a fly on the wall, how they were interacting with the fans, the smiles, the relaxation, the ease, you know, what they were doing was effortless. And yep. that's how it should be. And the fans, from my perspective, were just enjoying the moment, and it was just very chill. It was exactly how that sort of event should be, except for that fucking snare drum. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so uh, after after the four by eight B greet, uh, as you know, I kept we kept coming out in the middle of the floor, and we were like basically sliding boxes of goodies, people like free stuff, and then. I said, okay, we were about running about a half hour late. So I said, so me and Jim, man, we had the cups, you know, the, the cups, the black cups, the free ones. If somebody says, Andy, man, you got to go outside. I go, why? And they're like, you got to go outside. I says, oh, boy, no, nah, what's the matter? They're like, the Jim's like, you got to go outside. You got to see this. He goes, it's down the block. I'm like, what? He goes, it's down the block to the fence, the end of that other fence. I'm like, uh-oh. So we go out the door, and I'm like, and of course the crowd starts looking at me, going, "Andy, what's going on?" I'm like, "I'm like, I got cops, but don't kill me. You're not gonna miss a thing. We're running about 15 minutes late. Don't worry, <laughs> you're not gonna miss anything." And I'm in the back of my mind going, "We're dead because the crowd was massive." And um, and so so I said, "Well, guess what? Yeah, I got cops. Anybody take a cup?" And me and Jim went down the whole line. Cup, 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 cup. Take one, take one. And everybody seemed happy. And then... Well, I, I mean, I, I remember when you were doing the cups, because inside you just came by all the vendors' cups. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, you were, you were just on autopilot. Well, we had so many, so much goodies. They had, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, pendants, what do you call them? Things with, with the pumpkins on them. The, yeah, each guy. That, that was neat. And I don't know where they went to. I didn't even see them all night. They were gone. And we had pins and picks. And at one point, I just got on stage. And we were going to say, just, here we go. It's Christmas. Here we go. I'm just like, here we go. Because there's no way I could walk around the crowd and just try to. I did a little bit. Started handing out picks. Yeah, once, you know? once, the, once the doors were open, it was impossible to move. That was when, you know, things started getting a little bit concerning from our perspective. We're up on the wings and we've got this metal railing around us and someone started talking about the station fire oh. because it got that packed uh you, you know you know when the van halen tribute band was playing it was steaming in there i mean yes. there was no air it you know i saw i had two books left and i'm like i'm packing up i'm out I am totally, I'm tapping out because I can't take the heat, I can't take the lack of air, and I can't ta uh, take not being able to move. I couldn't get out from behind the table to go to the bar, to go to the restroom, to do anything, and people couldn't move. They would, like, come walking along um, and get to Bob's table, and then they were stuck. There was no outlet for them to go anywhere. We had people who were coming up thinking there was a shortcut to the restroom, and they got even stuck. If you, even, if you could, even if you could get to the bar, they wouldn't serve you anyways. No, they were they slow. They were terrible. They were some of the slowest bartenders. Not slow. Ever. They were terrible, and I'm going to admit it. I don't care. They were terrible. How can you have one? First of all, they only had one person to start out with. Then they end up getting, like, two. You have that massive amount of people, and they knew that they were going to get that many. Like, they knew that it was going to be a lot of people. And, and you only have a couple of people serving? That was ridiculous. They should at least had five or six more in that bar standing and going bink, 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 or a certain spot. They could have made money. You know? I mean, what is it with these, you know, these people I, that I just never understand? You know, their it, beers were horrendously expensive, but they didn't have uh, anyone to, to sell them. You know, I mean, it was what, eight bucks for a Corona? Are you shitting me? Uh, I, didn't even, I don't even know the prices. I wasn't even, and then, you know, we, we had uh, sperm, uh, sperm, shot glasses. They were special. It said to hang on one side. It said to gather through the other side. They were up on the bar sitting there in the, in the boxes. And at one point, I'm like, dude, the guy, the guy with the face paint and stuff, whatever he's supposed to be. I'm like, dude, you know if somebody buys a shot, they're supposed to either get a shot glass or you're supposed to put the shot in the shot glass and give it to them if they buy a shot? Oh, well, yeah, we, we don't know. What do you mean you don't know? This is what this is supposed to be for. 
And the guy's looking at me, and I'm like, so I took a couple out. I'm like, look. And the guy goes, well, we got some over there. And I'm like, well, why, guys, you know. Oh, I'm like, I just shook my head. I, I just, I don't get it. That place made a fortune anyways. So, um, you know, I, I, I uh, you know, I thought Kiss America was awesome. I thought 1984 was awesome. I thought 4x8 was awesome. Yeah, then, I, I, uh, I had I, I went back to my hotel room and I hopped on a Facebook. My, I think it was uh, Joe Polo's uh, Facebook stream of the four by face set because I just could not handle any more after being in there for the amount of time that I've been in. Uh, but four by fate was absolutely fantastic. And then that moment, you announced it. You got up on stage. You're, I you're, did. You're you're I, you're the one. I can't even remember. You're that's the, how. That's it. I'm serious. That's how things went so nuts. I mean, we we did a charity thing in between. Oh, which I can talk about that today. Now now we I know stuff. You know, we did the charity stuff. You know, we're doing the raffles. Mm -hmm. We're trying to do them as fast as we can because we're trying to keep on a schedule. Which I wish we could have slowed down a little bit, just make it a little bit better. So. We, you know, people could hear us more. I understand people couldn't even hear in the back, but I mean, because the way, because there's so many people and the echoing and all that stuff, <laughs> even though my voice can travel, it's still like Kim says, we couldn't hear. Kim was in the back near the bar area with some people. She said, <coughs> nobody could hear us. Absolutely, because just the way the echoing and to so many people, it just didn't work. And I'm like, there's nothing we could do. So, anyways, uh, you tell me. I, I really sometimes I just don't remember. At some point. Yeah, you you announced it. I mean, you you were like a mad pirate up on that stage, <laughs> um, you know, just announcing him. And Vinny, Vinny walked up onto that stage. I mean, he he looked like he was being pushed up a little, but uh, he, well, I mean, he he was there. He 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 took that step and got up on stage with an electric guitar to perform with Four by Fate. Um, was there ever it, any doubt that he was going to show up after, after he'd finished signing at the Holiday Inn? Was there any fears, or did it, you were you just kind of out of the situation and knew that he'd be there and had faith? We knew he'd be there. We we knew he'd be there. Uh, two things. Number one, well, three things. We knew he was going to be there. We had no doubt about it. He came in. I mean, hey, Mama, we were running late anyways. So he was a little late, but we were a little late. So, I mean, it all worked out anyways. Uh, so, you know, um, we came. He had makeup on. We didn't expect him to have the makeup on. We figured he would have wiped it off his face by then. That's a long day with makeup. So, again, I, I, you know, as much as he was kind of a pain in the ass to Joe and I through seven or eight to seven, eight months in, in ways, personally, you know, I don't want to dig too deep into it. He showed up in makeup, which I'm totally stunned. So, again, I give him props for even wearing it that long, and he was sick. I'm not lying. He was actually sick. He's, like, shoving sting up his nose because he's trying not to, you know, ruin the makeup as much and all this stuff. So, <laughs> even the door, even the, we were standing there, you know, we kind of, like, clearly, you know, everybody kind of move out of the way a little bit, get him on stage. Gets on. He's got, he's got face paint on. We didn't expect him to have face paint on. So we were like, oh, face paint on. Okay. So we knew the two songs we was doing. We knew the two songs we were doing. And then all of a sudden, 4 by Fate looks at him and says, hey, you want to do Cold Gin? That, from, from what I understand, because we were on the side down below. So we couldn't even really see. It was just a massive amount of flooding of people. That's when it was the worst of the worst, you know, like sardines. And the sardines got the hands up with their phone cells going, oh, my God, you know. And next you know, you, they're playing, and next you know, okay, he's done. Next you know, they're like, hey, you want to play Cold Gin? They, he's there playing Cold Gin with him. And he turns, and he's got this huge-ass smile on his face. And I'm like, unbelievable. I'm like, why can't this guy be like this all the time? Why, why couldn't he have been like this with Joe and I the whole time? Why couldn't he have been like this? Because you know what? If he was like when he treated everybody that was there, you know, for the photos, the signatures, and the guitar stuff playing and everything, if he was that as happy and that thing through the whole thing, you know what? Jo Joe probably has him back down next year. But guess what? It ain't going to happen. The, the number one question, will you ever work with Vinny again? No way in hell. <laughs> I will never, 
ever work with that guy again. Never. And it's a shame because I I would have even going to have a jacket, creature's jacket made for him, and I had the cross that I was wearing that you might have saw on Monday. I was actually going to make him, have him, I was going to pay for it, have him made one so he could wear it with the photos. I mean, that's how much I was going to go out of my mind, you know, and it's too bad. I wish Minnie would get with the right people. Somebody, I mean, they say, well, you can't have a fan be as your guy. Yes, you can if you get the right people. Yes, you can. You know, you it, can. It, it sounds to me like Vinny is fantastic when he's actually doing the event, when he's there, when he's signing, when he's taking the photographs, when he's there to play on stage. But getting him to that point is the challenge through the months, uh, you know, the amount of time in between uh, agreeing to do an event and the event occurring. There is doubts, there's concerns, there's flip flopping, maybe to a certain extent, um, moving goalposts, testing boundaries and whatnot that goes on. Um, that if he had the right and, people working with him who basically only need to say, Here, here's the contract, sign it, and do all of that, you know, and leave Vinny just to be the person who shows up. If they could, if they, someone could separate Vinny from all of the other crap so that Vinny is just the commodity showing up to execute and collect the check, do the work, get paid, um, it would probably be a lot less painful for everyone involved. You know, there's always going to be challenges that come up when you have a, a guest, especially a high profile. You know what? Guest. You can't say that. Uh, I'm going to stop you right there. Not true. Because I, I, since the beginning of these living, the start of living in sins, all the way up until this year, you, you, I've had amount of guests, amount of band, the bands play now in the last two years. Vinny was the most difficult person to work with, period. Period. End of story. I could put all the other people together through eight years. Eight years. He was the difficult. You could put them all together. He's the most difficult person. And again, I don't know what it is, and it's too bad. I, I do. I feel bad for the guy in a way because if he had somebody, I'm not saying like myself, okay? Yeah, okay. Maybe like myself. That would, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to would you say guide or whatever, or whatever they have to do, you know? But, you know, I don't know what's in his personal life, and I don't really care at this point. I don't really care. It's too bad. But for, for, from my point of view of, like I said, again, there was some inside stuff and not so hot, but for everybody else, it worked out wonderful. Everybody seemed to have a great time, and that's how I'm going to go with it. Yeah, you know? at, at the end of the day, is it a sense of mission accomplished? Wash my hands, it's done. Everyone got as much as they were going to get. They may not have ended up with signed, you know, posters. Um, but other than that, did he essentially honor the spirit of the contract in your point of view, uh, ultimately, with what he did deliver? Well, depends how you look at it, too. You know, he, he's, you know, you get paid, you get paid to do a job, right? If you do not fulfill that job, what happens to you? You don't get paid or you're going to do something else for it. So, like I said, a lot of people were just happy in the long run. You know, and that's the way I'm going to look at it. A lot of people are not happy in the long run. And again, I, I you know, as much as he just drove us nuts sometimes, he really did well with the fans. And, and that's all it counts. Because if he did bad with the fans, that would have killed us. You know, that would have really punished us in the long run, you know, because because if you, if we had 150 people on Tuesday and 130 on Monday that did it, come on and say, oh, my God, that was the worst experience ever, this and that and everything else. Oh, my God, I just probably would have lost it, you know, and, and, I'm, and uh, there was another rumor going around it. Somebody had posted on Facebook. No, we did not have to pay Vinny to play cold gin. It wasn't like, hey, here's a throw. We're going to give you more money. Wrong. Not true. And um uh, so that was really spontaneous. That was Vinny's it idea. Was. It was. We, Joe and I had no clue that was coming. No clue. Because me and Joe stood next to each other at the bottom of the stairs and went, are you kidding me? Seriously. We looked at each other and looked, hey, are you kidding me? This is happening. And he's smiling. He turned around. We could see him because we were like, because we were trying to see him. We're like, oh, my God, look at him. And he's smiling. We're like, 
this is what it's supposed to be about. So I just wish that he could have done one of those little guitar noodly things that you mentioned earlier that he did at sound check. Would be cool. Because the concern still remains, <laughs> and, and this has nothing to do with you or Joe or the gathering or the hangar or anything. Um, remains about his competency on the guitar that the songs that he played are songs that pretty much any middling guitarist can play the rhythm parts to and Pat was doing the majority of the heavy lifting on the on the lead work um, but it was still great to see Vinny holding a guitar on stage and smiling as you rightfully say I mean y- your your reaction to him smiling is really what it's all about is like there is Vinny fucking Vincent on stage with an electric guitar smiling and there are the South American fans olaying him um, and know. people were cheering Vinny and everything else I mean it, it was it was surreal for us at the point you know it finally like you know, you know, there's always going to be complainers. There's always going to be somebody that doesn't like this. He didn't play lead. He didn't, like, rip it up. And I'm like, we got him there. And he played. He's physically here. He's physically on a stage for the first time in over 20-something years. And he's got a guitar in his hand. And he's, okay, he's not playing leads, but at least he's playing it. And it was plugged in. Yep. And, and it was turned. The we, body we, was we turned. Re- and we went to rehearsal. We saw it. We saw him plug in. We saw him do it. We saw it, and then he turned around and played, and we saw it, and people saw him live on stage play, and and just a crowd action. You like you say, people are all late, and all of a sudden, Vinny, 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 and we were like, okay, we, we, we did it, you know, and, and literally, I'm a, I'm a fan, which is really bizarre to me, you know, I, I'm a fan. I never ever thought my whole life that I would be put in this position to be able to do this. I'm just a fan. I don't have a ton of money. I don't have uh, insides. It was all just work, you know, just, hey, would you like to do this? All through these years, would you like to do that? Or would you like to do this? How would you like to try that? You, 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 you gain trust with people. That word of mouth goes through, and word of mouth is a big thing. You know, so I, I I can't believe it. You know, I, I just still can't believe it that I have that I was part of something, as people say, like history. Um, that I just we just brought Vinnie Vincent not only to Miami photos, uh, you know, signatures, and now brought him on stage, and he hasn't been on stage over twenty something years since what. When's the last time you're, you're showing yeah. California, right? Yeah, no, yeah. 96. And I, I don't remember the details. You know, he hadn't played live, you know, a full concert since 88. But, uh, you know, he'd done the expos in 96. I, I don't think he did any in 97. But whatever. You know, what is the future for you? You're out now. You you are like, that was it for <laughs> cruise parties that you will never do it again or Kim will kill you. Well, Kim, well Kim, 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 Kim is standing right here. She just came up. She's she going. She does, heard does, does she have a sharp object in her mouth in case you say you're not retired? Is Kim going to make yes. sure that you uh, sign that uh, the end is the end is the end contract? Well, nobody believes me. Everybody thinks I'm I'm pulling their legs. You know, uh, how, how do I say? Well, she's looking at me. <laughs> Maybe you're gonna get her over here. But, but, better be safe. Yeah, but be um, <laughs> you know, I, I've been on these cruises now all eight, and, and it's not like a brag thing, you know. You know, I've, eat, I've eaten like you know cheese and crackers, if you know what I mean, too, to, to get on it, you know, and stuff like that. True. But I've done something every year since the beginning. And you're not doing it next year. You know, a party. I've been a part of a party. You know, the original ones were living in sin with Jeff. You know, we did four, and then I did one by myself. Jeff and I basically had to take over somebody else's on the year two because we did ours like the day, day, day before. The day, the day before is weird. The chick like oh, fast, so me and Jeff end up take, taking it over. Basically, had to run out that one. I mean, I have never. Be I've never taken a break. I've never gone on the Kiss Cruise and taken the cruise. I've never done or, it. Or been a consumer of any pre-cruise events. It's always been you organizing it and taking away from your time and your coin and making everyone else happy. So, But but it's a double-edged sword because I, I love doing it at the same time. It's kind of a weird thing. I It was like, she's looking at me, staring at me over 
I, I love doing it, but then to a point where some people said, hey, you should take it back. Like, take it back as in go back to the old days, you know, at the Holiday Inn. You saw the Holiday Inn. Once you get to that level, and, I mean, you know, Joe and I now from last year to this year have taken it to another level. How can you go backwards? Because not all those people can fit in there. It will never, ever, ever be the same. You no, know, and, and as consumers, people's expectations grow every year. You know, and, and it's that's like, another well, thing. How, how do you ever top having Vinny and what you accomplished this year with all of the bands <laughs> and all of the uh, event activities? I mean, how how do you ever go? And and why would you ever want to try and top that? Is it now the right time to bow and let someone else kind of uh, take a lead and take it maybe in another direction, and you get to enjoy it as a customer, a consumer? Well, I, you know, I it's a double edged sword. It's going to be tough. I, I don't know because I, I, you know, I am done. But it's it's going to be very hard for me. Let's say in, in a couple. I usually, I'm already working on next year's. Everybody knows that. As soon as I either step step off the ship. Actually, I'm already have. I'm waiting for the paperwork. <laughs> I'm actually setting up the hotel again, which is you know they're going out of Miami, so I'm actually setting up the hotel and the rides again for everybody. So I'm not letting that go. Yeah, I have a great reputation with them. They know who I am, and they love me. So I'm going to do that for everybody, and that's why I want to do that for everybody. So that's my thing. So I'm doing that for everybody. As a party wise. Well, yeah, it's l- time for let me. me. Let me just say, the rides were fantastic. To get to the port from the hotel, boom, out front, fill up, get on. Dude takes your luggage, give him five bucks and a tip if you want. Uh, it was great. It was smooth. It was fantastic. I appreciated the hell out of that as a newbie on the cruise and having you know several pieces of luggage. It was a massive help. Yeah, and, and, and you know, so so I'm not giving that part up because I got that reputation because I want to go. You know what I mean? So I want to be get the same stuff. The party thing, yeah, it's just time. You know, I mean, like I said, I've never gotten a break. I, I, I've missed things. I've, you know, other people have like little functions going on. I miss them all. I miss stuff. I get, you know, and I do get to see everybody, and everybody says hi and thank you and everything else. But you're right. But getting to hang out with people is what it's all about, and getting to enjoy the company of people and friends that you've made on the cruises, or friends that you're meeting for the first time, or maybe for the many times. Maybe it's the only time that you see people on these cruises, because that's what it's got me thinking about. If I do Kiss Cruise Nine, and I'm strongly leaning towards it, just because of the people component, getting to sit down and have a drink with friends from Holland or Sweden, <laughs> Norway, all over the world, the 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 chill- Chileans and Argentines, you know, all these people who, like you bump into, when you're running around organizing it, you are missing out on that side of things, as are the people who are with you. Kim, you know, ends up having to help you by default, kind of, so. Yeah, you know. and, and, and that's another thing, too, is that uh, this is not a six months process. This is a year process. You just don't turn around and say, hey, I'm going to have a party tomorrow. Let's come hang out. You know, you could, but I mean, like, to get special guests if you want to get guests or bands you want to start booking bands you're talking contracts now you're talking money you know this is a it's a year it's a year process it's definitely a year process so, so as so, a consumer andy what do you want to see next year in miami for the pre-cruise event what do you whoever takes up the gauntlet and does something and you know what would you want to see as a guy who gets to just enjoy it um well, I, from my understanding, Joe, Joe Joe is going to, he's already in the process of, you know, he says he's trying to find a bigger a bigger venue, you know. Um, so I would imagine he's going to have bands and stuff, but I don't really care. I, I just want to go, because I look at it, it's my point of, I, I'm not like, I want, I want, I want. Because I've been on that side of, the, the you know, setting the things up. You know what I mean? So I don't really care. I I I don't want, you know, I don't need like this year was so massive, right? I don't need that to be massive next year. I don't I don't really care. I, I just want to go and have fun. You know, and also, you know, I am getting married 2 weeks beforehand. You know, that's a <laughs> that's a, that's another <laughs> she's only gone. Uh, that that's another, you know, thing I have to, you know, we we have, we have to deal with. <laughs> it's, you know what I mean? Yeah. We, we get a, I, 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 I think you gave the perfect answer. I mean, it, number one, 
you're talking about family coming first. And it, I never and it, said that. And, and, no. I never said you family did. first. No. <laughs> and you talked about fun. That's the, well, that's the right answer for everything that we do when it comes to KISS, that it has I to be fun. I get burnt out. I get burnt out. Okay? I get, you know, it's fun, but then I get burnt out. Okay? I think I've come to that point where, you know, you have fun and you have stress. I, I heard Kim. Kim, I'm burnt out. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> <You> hear <it? laughs> yeah. But sometimes, you know, sometimes it's been starting to flip a little bit. You know, it's, it's just, you know, you get stressed. And, um, you know, you, you know me, man. I'm all over the place. I'm very active. I'm all over the place. I'm, I get, you know, never nonstop. I get, you get, I get tired. I get burnt out. And, it, you know, and some people will say, well, you should do this and you should do that. I got news for you. Step up to the plate. I said that every year. The complainers, if you want to do it, do something. Don't say, well, you know, I can't because I don't have connections. Neither do I. It's all word of mouth. It's all like you get a reputation. You just, you know, try it. You know, that's all you can do is try. You know, but, you know, yeah, it will be interesting next year because, I just want to go out now. Now I get to hang out. Yep. You know, I get to show up a day before. Hey, hey, what's going on? And I don't have this. You know, I don't have the extra stress. You know, yep. the tiredness. You, you know, the tired. You'll get to enjoy it a lot more. But I want to talk about one thing before we wrap up here, and yeah, that, is, that is your bar crawl. How did that go? Because that was right before you started getting sick. Uh, because I, I saw I saw some pictures of you on that, and I'm like, oh my god, he does not look good. Um, no, you, you looked horrendous, actually. I mean, you you were talking earlier, and I don't know whether, whether we're on the air yet. You know about how yeah. white you looked. I mean, you looked horrendous in the yeah. few pictures I saw, and I I didn't go on the bar crawl because I was absolutely wiped out. I actually spent very little time in Nassau. I went out to try and get wireless to do some computer shit. And ended up just looking for Diet Coke, which you couldn't get on the boat. And then I went back <laughs> back on the boat and just hung out with people who had stayed on. So uh, how did that go for you? Because that's another big component of what you've done on, you know, as part of the cruise things. And would you uh, be organizing a bar crawl, bar crawl on uh, Kiss Cruise 9? <laughs> well, um, you know, it, it, everybody will ask what it is a bar crawl. And it's a big, been a big joke through you did years. Uh, actually, Tina Malloy started it as a joke, and um, uh, we did. Then, then we met, and we became friends, and then we did it together. And then she stopped going on a cruise, and she's like, "Keep going on." I'm like, "I don't know if I really want to." Come on, come on, come on. So uh, basically, the bar crawl is again. It's another. It's a process, but it's not. It's not as much work as the party stuff but basically you know where, where the, the crew stops uh you know we when we find out where the crew stops uh you know uh contact the bars and stuff and say hey we're gonna have a bunch of people show up what can you give us for drink deals and this and that and they end up being on us coupons or like bracelets or whatever they do so every year it could change and and every year i'm like oh i make up you know i have somebody who makes up shirts at cost they don't you know basically you know, I show them what they look like and make one up, show it up and say, this is the color this year, this and that. Do you want to buy one if you want? You can send me over to PayPal. It basically covers to uh, uh, have the shirt done. Then they ship to me. Uh, we pull them out and put everybody's name on them, like a sticker, because I print out their names, sticker. And then they, uh, usually I give them out to Holiday Inn this year, like this year I did. and Or they could meet up at the, uh, the day of the, the morning of the bar crawl. You know, and usually uh, we meet up at the atrium, was what they call the atrium, about 8.45, you know, so everybody get that morning cup, if you know <laughs> what I mean. Can't miss that morning kiss cruise cup. So then basically there's your first bar, and then uh, uh, we usually travel out to wherever, depending on where the bars are. Uh, I've cut it back down to three the last couple of years because three seems to be better because we've gotten more people go, so it gives them more time. <laughs> and we <laughs> usually travel, uh, walk to the furthest bar first and work our way back in case anybody's too drunk to either make it back or needs to find a trash can and, blah, every, every, you know, whatever. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, <laughs> it was a little bit rough for me this year. Uh, we had a huge crowd, though. Uh, we took pictures in the atrium. We had people on the stairs and people up top and people down. Uh, it went all right. Uh, it was under the weather. Uh, the first bar we went to is called the Tiki Bikini Bar Bar, but it was like the ocean, the beach. So I think a lot of, a lot of people ended up staying a little bit longer. And then we went to Senior Frogs. 
And then we went to Fat Tuesdays. They moved Fat Tuesdays from the beach area to downtown, like a little small, like little dump spot, you know. And uh, it's always fun. Uh, I always tell people uh, it's all about fun. It's all about meeting new friends, meeting catch up with old friends, meeting to make new friends. You know, put put your kiss politics away, put your bitching away, and let's just go have some drinks, have fun, take videos, pictures, whatever, have fun, and that's how it works out. So, but I was a little bit under the weather. I'm usually turn, I'm usually red because it's usually hot, and I'm Irish, and I usually turn red and hot. But as you can see in the photos, I am jet white. So, by that afternoon, by the time two o'clock in the afternoon came on, I was done. I was just. Flu. That was it. I was <laughs> totally burnt out. Everybody talks about that Kiss Crud crew. I never had it. Uh, I got it this year and the flu. Done. I couldn't believe it. Here I am back on the ship. Missed the guy who's all over the place. Is now laying in the bed watching Ace Freely on a television. Nope. Talk about depressing. <laughs> that really put a stab into me. I, I was the same, so don't feel, don't feel too bad. I mean, I barely got off the boat, and I had... Uh, 10 hours to kill before my flight and i had to take the guitar to get it shipped and Ugh. then i got to the airport and you know i'm hanging out i'm seeing pe i'm seeing like people you know personalities walk by I'm, i won't even go near them you know because you know i'm so sick i'm not sharing that and i'm just trying to not choke and you know it was horrendous but and you know, you know you, and everyone's heard us me. yeah and all these people come up to me i'm trying to get off the ship and they're like andy you okay no Oh, we're going to, uh, no, stay away from me. You're going to die if you come near me because I have this, you know, <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I was literally like keeled over, like walking off the ship. I mean, literally, I, I didn't eat the night. That the, I didn't eat for four days. Kim's like, oh, my God, you didn't eat for four days. It's really something wrong with you. You know, and I'm like, oh. I, I just couldn't look at food. I couldn't, I mean, that Chris, I had more than a crew. I had the flu. I had, you know. Yep. It sucks. And, that, and everyone's heard of you hacking through this show, and me, I've been, going on, <laughs> I've been going on mute to hack. You know, it, it's still going. I mean, I haven't had a beer since Sunday on the boat. I, I have, I've basically quit drinking since the cruise. Uh, I, God. Yeah, <laughs> but, but but I'll tell you what. I enjoyed the cruise. Thank you, Ace Freely, and thank you, Bruce Kulick. You made the cruise for me. Point blank. Surreal. I could not believe it. Here I am watching. I, I know we're getting back to crew stuff. He's really unbelievable. I don't care if he missed, like you guys said earlier, I don't care if, what he missed. Off the hook. I could not believe it. I'm watching Ace really playing Save Your Love. Yep. I heard Dark Light for the first time ever in my whole life. Yep. I am, here I am listening to Bruce Kulik. And, and I've been at Crazy Nights is not one of my favorite Kiss CDs at all. But I'll tell you, those guys cranked it. Get rid of those synthesizers the way it should have been. If hey, Crazy hey, Nights, it's good rock and roll music. It. It's rock oh, music with balls. Lord, they killed it. Yep. And I, and then Carnival of Souls. Unreal. I just, you had to be there. I don't care if people say, oh, my God, the car looked dead. Well, I got news for you. We were dead because the first night, you know. We, we, kids, were, we were over scheduled. I mean, it was brutal what we went yeah. through. We were tortured by music. And it, what a wonderful way to look like a dead audience is that there was so much good music on that boat. It was everywhere. You were surrounded by Kiss. You were surrounded by great bands. You, um, you know, when Bruce performed, when... Kiss oh. performed the sail away when Ace the, came the out. The sail away, I mean, the Kiss sail away was awesome too. Yeah. You know, even even if even if they didn't have Bruce or Ace come up with them, just the other songs they did was great or awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, let's face it, Kiss mailed it in in the indoor show, point blank. They mailed it in. They used this as guinea pigs. Terrible. They sounded great. Yeah, it was a it great. Was, it was a great show. It was an exciting show, and but I, I, it was a very pedestrian set list. So there's, there's no getting around that, you know. I it, switched. It lacked the I excitement. switched for the first time. I switched for the first time ever to go to night one instead of night two. I don't know why. It was kind of cool seeing the first night because of the costumes, and everything. So I basically got the first look. Mm -hmm. uh, song wise, 
you know, I songs. If they had least, if they had thrown in two, just two, two off the wall songs of deep cuts, perfect. You know, if you think Heaven's on Fire is deep, nah, not. No, you know, and, and, and you know we've had the conversations. You know Kim, that, that Kim's, we're Kim's all sitting there song. going that yeah. if they do a rare song now, they're going to save this. If they do a rare song now, and you get to the end, and there was no rare song, but then you look back that it's twenty great Kiss songs, but it's the cruise. There needed to be if they'd come out right at the end, like they did that year that they came back out and did I. You know, if they'd ripped into tomorrow at the end, I would have been having kittens standing in puddles, to, you know, crying like a four year old. One or at least two, one or two songs. Yeah. Even if they did one off of Paul Solom and one off of Jeans, one or two songs. Instead, crowd... instead, I'm having to sit there justify to myself that there are 20 great songs in that set list and I have to be happy with being used as a guinea pig. Um, you know, it, it's a it's a kiss show. It's an I saw two more kiss shows to bring myself up to 21 on my personal, you know, journey of kiss concerts. So in, in that respect, I still, I still had fun. We still had fun. Yeah, it was a great audience. You know, it was great being in there. You were in the same show because I saw you. You four, you know, were like nearly stage center, and I think it was the first row of seats. You know, seats. right right above the pit. So you had yeah. a gr- had a great perspective to watch from. I wasn't that much further because there, I don't think there's a bad seat in the house if oh. you're if you're in the main section of the um, of the theater. So you know, it was it was a great show. It was an enjoyable show, and to be at a concert, you know, I've been at a concert with andy i've been at a concert with all these i can name all these other people who were in that first show that i will never probably go to a show with again because they live in norway or they live in sweden or somewhere else so yeah. in, in that terms those are the positives but in terms of the set overall uh, disappointment compared yeah. to previous because years they, because they base it on this is for deep cuts this is you know for the die these are the diehards play- we, 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 we don't play these off-the-wall songs and regular shows, concerts, because they don't care about them, but we do, and they didn't. So that that's why. That's why they keep saying that, and they shouldn't be saying that, that anymore. But I have to go back. I forgot one thing. Hmm. Um, again, uh, if it's not – I say it every year. If it's not, Two things. If it's not for you people that bought these tickets, you know – to, to, to go to the gathering, to do it if anything, this stuff doesn't happen. We can set it up, but if it's not for you people, this doesn't happen. And I'm telling you, it it comes from here. I love you people. I've had great years with you people doing all this stuff. I want to go and enjoy with you guys next year and just have fun and hang out. And the second of the thing is, all oh, we've always done something for charity, and I don't want to forget this, and I almost did, and I don't want to forget it. Again, this year we did, uh, you know, we raised money for Breast Cancer Research Foundation, which 92 or 93 cents per dollar actually goes to the cause, and it goes all over the world. It's just not like a state. And they always get a triple A plus rating. Uh, we said that we would, you know, get the money and then hold on to it because the Breast Cancer Research Foundation – uh, like, uh, you know, uh, matches your thing. So I can tell you right now, we made over $10,000 thanks to you guys, everybody out there that donated, okay? Uh, we are going to send the money. I think it's either next couple of days. Uh, the breast cancer people are going to match it. We're going to get a letter. So we will post either the letter or the check or something. Uh, I forgot how we're going to do it, but we're going to make sure that everybody shows that we actually sent the money in and it went to the right spot. And again, awesome, everybody. You know what I mean? You know, for as much as we do things, you know, for ourselves and crazy things, you guys did a great job for the charity again. Sweetness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we made over 10 grand, you know, because they did. So we made over like five grand. But when they did, it's over 10 grand for a great, awesome cause. So, yahoo. (laughs) That's fantastic. And congratulations to everyone for being a part of raising that money for, you know, a a charity that is going to touch everyone's life in some way or another. So, um, you know. Congratulations for being. Let's leave that there because that's such a high point on which to end. You know, enjoy your retirement, Andy. Uh, <laughs> you you survived the Vinnie Vincent experience, and Vinny Vin, and Vinny Vincent survived the Andy experience because. I mean, that's another thing too. Yeah, we could have. I mean, uh, you know, we did bang heads. Vinny and I did bang heads a couple of times. It could be that thing, but you know what? It ended up all working out. You know, in the long run, I really wished. 
I hope that Vinny gets with the right people and, and he does the smiling and happy thing and he does these things. You know what I mean? For himself and for, for the fans who want to see him. That's the thing. The fans want to see him. I just hope he gets on the right people with the right people to get him there. He That's does, all I can say. Know, and, and I'll end it right there. Vinny does a great job one-on-one with you when you're doing these. He's absolutely gregarious and wonderful to experience. So from that perspective, Andy, thank you. Joe, thank you. Your team, Kim, Patrice. You might see me know, again. You, know. you never know. You might see me again. You never know. <laughs> Yeah, but hopefully it's to sit down and have a drink with and hang out with and you're not running around going, grr, you know? <laughs> that, that'll be a much better way to enjoy the, uh, the pre-cruise activities where you can actually say, someone didn't show up, I don't care, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, Where, where's my free stuff? So, all right. Again, uh, thank thank you, everybody. Thank you, Julian. I am, thank you for the, uh, I am officially uh, part of the cesspool group, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I, I was happy to give out some T-shirts, and you know, um, again, for everyone who came by my table at, at the the hangar, thank you very much for your support. Without them, I can't continue to do what I do. Number one, I do it to satisfy my own curiosity, but you make it possible for me to uncover more stuff. So, thank you, everyone, and thank you, everyone on the boat who said hi, uh, who said that, that you listened to the podcast. We all appreciate that, whether it's my show or someone else's. It's uh, very cool that you give us your ears and listen to any of our podcasts about KISS. All right, let's wrap it. Thank you, Andy, and thank you, everyone, for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. (laughs) Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.